Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a very interesting equation. x to the power x equals zero. Now, this video is a video response to black pen, red pen. I'm going to go ahead and try to respond to some of the remarks he made in his video, as well as talk about some ideas. So if you are wondering what, where that video is, you can go ahead and find it by this title. I'm also going to be sharing a link down below. All right. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. But before we look at the equation, there's a couple different things I need to show you, including the graph. So can you graph y equals x to the power x? The answer is yes, you can. And this is what the graph looks like according to Desmos. And as you can see, we have the starting point sort of like at 0 comma 1 and then our graph decreases and then makes a minimum and then increases right as x approaches infinity y approaches infinity as x approaches 0 from the right y approaches 1 which is the limit right so this also means that 0 to the power 0 is equal to 1 do you see what i did there well this is something that he said he said there is no agreement on 0 to the power 0 and I agree with that. I, I think we have an agreement. Uh, some people think 0 to the power 0 is undefined. Some people think it's 1. And I'm one of those people who think it's 1. I strongly believe that 0 to the power 0 is equal to 1. And I'm not talking about the limit. I'm talking about the particular specific value. Okay? And this graph verifies it too, right? Kind of. Anyways, let's go ahead and see how we can approach this problem from different angles. So the equation we're trying to solve is x to the power x equals 0. Now, if you had something like x to the power y equals 0, obviously, this equation would have some solutions, which are pretty easy to find, don't you think? I mean, x would be 0, and obviously, you want y to be non-zero. And in this case, it's not for 0 to the power 0 being equal to 1. It is for, actually, it's for that reason. Sorry, I'm looking at it the other way around. So because 0 to the power 0 equals 1, you don't want the exponent to be 0 when the base is 0. Make sense? So if you raise 0 to any power, does that include negative powers? No. I think in this case, we probably have to specify that y needs to be positive. So maybe I can just write y is greater than 0. Because what happens is if uh, you raise 0 to a negative power, you're basically talking about 1 over 0, which is definitely undefined. I no doubt about it. Okay. I don't think anybody says, well, some people say indeterminate, but this is undefined. Or some people say, hey, this is infinity, whatever. It's not a number. So that's the easy case, right? What happens if you have something like this? Zero to the power y equals zero. What about the solution for y? Of course, you know that y not now needs to be any positive real number. Can it be a complex number? That's a good question. We're also going to be looking at the complex angle. Okay? So, we basically talked about 0 to the power 0 being 1, but at the same time, some people don't agree with that, and that's fine. I showed you the graph, and I think this is the time to talk about the complex case. Well, actually, before that, before we get into the complex case, can x be not 0? No, because for the very reason I just talked about, because 0 to the power 0 does not equal 0. Well, some people think it is, in which case x equals 0 would be a solution. Does anyone think that 0 to the power 0 is equal to 0? Because they think that when the base is 0, you just keep multiplying zeros. But the thing is, you have no zeros to multiply. So you have a 1 in the equation, which is kind of like an empty product. Make sense? Anyways, now what would happen if you had something like this? 0 to the power x equals 0, right? It's, it will be the same as this one. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at some complex scenarios. So I think he also mentioned in uh, some part of the video that when he gets to the complex case, something like a plus pi to the power a plus pi being equal to 0, what do you do with this, right? Something interesting. Well, let me go ahead and take it from here. When you have a complex number to another complex number, how do you write that? That's called the complex exponentiation. Exponentiation. So we have a definition for that. z to the power w is defined as e to the power w ln z. 
Now you kind of have to think about two things here. First of all, E is Euler's number. This is an exponential. So we have a good definition. And we can basically also talk about E to the I theta can be written as cosine theta plus I sine theta. So if I can turn this WLN Z to I times something, then I could probably write uh, it as cosine theta plus I sine theta. Or if we have an R in the equation like the modulus, then I can also go ahead and take care of that, right? Make sense? So this pretty much covers all the cases. But what is ln Z? ln Z is a good question, right? So if you have Z, which is a complex number, then ln Z can be defined as ln absolute value of Z plus I times the argument of Z. And the argument of Z is actually theta, which satisfies this type of equation. Or you can say tangent theta is equal to B over A. Make sense? Okay. So tangent of the argument of Z is B over A. But we don't need to worry too much about it. Let's just go ahead and hold on to this. And I could probably use for the argument of Z, maybe I can use a ver um, what is that word? I can use the inverse trigonometric function, which is the arc 10 of b over a. Make sense? It's not always going to be that, so this kind of oversimplifies the problem. And I know in different quadrants, uh, the argument will be a different thing. For example, in the third quadrant, tangent is also positive, which is going to give you the same result when a and b are both positive. But you have to add pi to the angle. So you kind of have to consider the quadrants, but let's simplify this problem a little bit by considering this particular case. Make sense? It won't really matter, uh, kind of without loss of generality, we can use that. So for a plus bi, what is it going to look like then? ln a plus bi is going to be ln the absolute value, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared, plus i times the argument, which I can hopefully write as arctangent b over a. And here's the thing, you want to multiply ln z by w, but w is also z, so z to the z, in other words, it's just going to be e to the power z ln z, and then that is going to equal e to the power z, which is a plus bi, multiplied by ln z, which is this one, by the way, and I was able to write it as ln square root of a squared plus b squared plus i times arc 10 b over a. And again, to fix the angle here, you can add pi, subtract pi, whatever. That doesn't really take away from the fact that we can write something like this. Okay, now we have e to the power, a complex number times another complex number. To simplify the process, I can kind of write this as another complex number, right? So here's what I want. I want, and by the way, uh, I can just go ahead and switch over to x because my original equation was x. So I can basically set this equal to zero. But guess what? Even with complex exponents, this is never gonna happen. e to the power c plus di can never be zero, therefore we do not have any solutions to this equation, okay? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.